2021 is upon us. You know I love a good habit. Habits literally make up our whole lives. We can tailor our habits to create the life that we want. And luckily, the power to change and develop them lies within us. Today, I have 21 habits for health, wealth, and happiness in 2021. Hi, I'm Tash and welcome back or welcome to The Loving Lifestyle. If you've been here before, you'll know that this channel is dedicated to helping you live your best life. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell below. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday on actionable self-development, mindset and productivity. Happy New Year, friends. Today, we've got 21 ideas for 21 new habits you could start in 2021. I've split the habits up into seven categories with three ideas for each. Health, relationships, career, spirituality, money, learning, and fun. So, our 21 good habits for 2021. To start with, health. Obviously, we want to be the healthiest that we can be in 2021. But I'm not talking so much about physical health today. Instead, I have some ideas on habits that will help you achieve a healthy mind and lifestyle. Firstly, have a wind down routine. This is actually a habit that I'm gonna start implementing in my own life in 2021. I have a great morning routine that helps set me up for my day and allows inspiration to flow, but I'm not so good at winding down at night or allowing myself to just stop working and chill for a bit. So I'm going to implement an evening routine based on the things that I enjoy. If you also struggle to turn your mind off at night, I recommend creating a wind down routine that will help you sleep better and so ultimately will help your life in so many ways. Because when we sleep well, we feel more energized, more productive and more likely to smash our goals. Habit number two for health, is to have a self-care plan. Sometimes when we burn out or feel drained, we know we need to recuperate and reset, but we haven't got a self-care plan in place, so we just end up watching Netflix or eating ice cream and ultimately feeling worse afterwards than we did before. Sound familiar? If we truly want to look after ourselves in 2021 and beyond, we need a self-care plan that we can get out anytime we feel blech in order to look after ourselves a little better. So we're literally just gonna write out a plan on a piece of paper that we can stick to a notice board or just have in our notes on our phone. And firstly, we wanna make sure we're drinking one liter of water as step one. I've talked about the importance of hydration in my five practical steps to incorporate more self-care into your life video. So check that out if you want to know why otherwise just take my word for it then we want to make sure that our space is clear set a timer for 15 or 20 minutes and clean and clear your room your desk your office whatever your surroundings are get it tidy even if you're feeling crap 15 minutes is not a very long amount of time. You'll be surprised how much you can actually get done in that amount of time. Now for the good stuff. As a reward for drinking your water and clearing your space, have three ideas for things you can do that bring you joy and will help you recuperate. So for me, this would be taking a bath with Gilmore Girls, a nice candle and a face mask. Maybe it's taking your dog out on a long walk in the park. Maybe it's making some cookies or cooking your favorite dinner. Maybe it's giving yourself a little extra time to work on your passion or your hobbies like painting or photography or sport. Include at least three ideas in your self-care plan so that you can intuitively choose what feels good to you at that time. And make sure those things are actually things that you enjoy doing. By hydrating and cleaning your space, you've done those things that you should do to make yourself feel better. Now we're gonna have something that we want to do to make ourselves feel better. So for example, I'm not going to put yoga on my self-care plan because it's still a chore to me at the moment as it's something that I'm training myself to do regularly. So the prospect doesn't really bring me joy at this point in time. Hopefully that will change. But whilst self-care is absolutely about doing things that will benefit us even when we don't want to, I consider that to be a bit more of the daily life self-care, not burnout self-care. Do you understand where I'm coming from? You know that we want to take our vitamins and go to bed at a reasonable time and exercise regularly in order to look after ourselves in the short and long term. But we also want to seek joy and have a recovery plan for when things just get too much. And that is what I'm focusing on more with this habit. 
And the final step in your self-care plan, now that you are hydrated, have a clear space, have done something that made you feel happy and joyful, is to analyze what actually went wrong to cause you to feel this way and how you could avoid the same thing happening again in the future. And to make sure that you're doing enough every single day in that daily life self-care so that you're looking after yourself. Do you need to start turning your computer off at 5 p.m. so that you can have some downtime? Do you need to start taking a walk alone once a week for some time by yourself? Doing these habits can help you avoid feeling overwhelmed and avoid that burnout in the future and ultimately be the healthiest that you can be in 2021. The third habit for health in 2021 is to smile every single day. Okay, now I know that we'd like to hope that we are automatically smiling every day. However, if you're stuck at home at the moment, you may not be having that many smile-worthy moments in your days. However, we can actually trick our brains into releasing those endorphins simply by faking a smile or just smiling a real smile but to ourselves. Yep, a study was actually done on this and it genuinely works. In fact, if you try it, you will notice it for yourself. This is actually something that I used to do about four years ago when I was having a bit of a rough time of it. I didn't know anything about the science behind it at the time, but I remember often telling myself to just smile whilst I was getting ready for my day. Like even when I was just in the shower or getting dressed. And it genuinely helped me feel more positive about the day ahead and cope better with the struggles I was facing at that time. Whilst my life is indefinitely more positive and smile worthy now, I still do remind myself to smile when I meditate or do a workout to give myself that extra boost of endorphins and happiness. It is such a simple habit, but it really will improve your life in 2021 and beyond. Next, we're gonna look at relationships and these three habits will help you have the strongest relationships in 2021. The relationships that we have with others are so important for our health and happiness. Since if we feel disconnected from the people we care about or if we're surrounding ourselves with the wrong kinds of people, that disconnect trickles down into how we feel about ourselves and our happiness. So firstly, it's a pretty easy one and that is to know your love languages. So I actually spoke about this in my first ever YouTube video, which was about the book Captivate by Vanessa Van Edwards. It was actually the first time I'd ever heard of love languages, but they have been around for a lot longer. I am gonna link the video up here, but man, it was a shaky start to this YouTube thing so please forgive me for the cringe factor. Anyways the general gist of love languages is to know what each person in your life values so you can both feel appreciated and like the relationship is mutual. You can do a quiz online to find out your love languages and why not just send the quiz over to a friend or partner who you'd like to strengthen your relationship with. It is the most straightforward way to know how you can make that other person feel appreciated and you can tell them exactly what you value too so as to avoid any unnecessary disconnect or misunderstandings. For example, my love language is words of appreciation with a little acts of service thrown in, which is pretty lucky because I'm in a long distance relationship. So if my love language were to be quality time, we'd probably have some issues. By knowing the love languages of yourself and your loved ones, you can make sure that your relationships bring you more connection and less friction this year. Another great habit to develop is to monitor your relationships, the good and the bad. They say that you are the result of the five people who you spend your most time with and this can be a bit of a scary thought if the people around you don't embody who you aim to be. Rejigging the relationships in your life can be a pretty daunting idea because we hate to upset or let people down. But if you want to live your best life and become the best version of yourself, then you need to be surrounding yourself with people who encourage, value, and respect you and your decisions. And don't try to drag you down to their level or push you off track. Check in regularly with yourself and with the people in your life. When you spend time with these people, do you feel drained or inspired? When you talk to them about your plans and your dreams, do they encourage you or do they roll their eyes? There are over 7 billion people in the world. You don't have to settle for low energy friendships. And you're not ditching people really either. They can find new friends too. Don't feel bad about letting people go, even people you've known for years. You'll both find better suited people to hang out with. It's not that deep. And thirdly, for the people who you do hold dear and who value, appreciate, and respect you, tell those people who mean the most to you that you're grateful for them or that you, they've helped you, even when you're not bevved. I totally disagree with the drunk mind speaks a sober heart 
statement sentiment thing or at least my drunk mind definitely doesn't. So when people get all lovey-dovey when they've had a few it doesn't make me feel valued when we've sobered up. Instead, or as well, tell those closest to you how you feel at any time. As cliche as it is, you only live once, so you may as well be as open and as honest toward the people who you care about as you can be. There is truly nothing nicer than hearing that someone loves and appreciates you. Even those who struggle to take a compliment or brush it off or make it as a joke will be grinning ear to ear on the inside, and it will subtly bring you closer together. Life is too short to hold your tongue or to be emotional emotionally unavailable. Now onto some career focused habits. Again, these look different to everyone depending on your goals or values or the type of field that you're in. However, there are some habits that we can all do that will improve our career vision and ultimately our health, wealth and happiness. Firstly, we gotta know our vision. Do you have direction in your work life or are you coasting at the moment? The thing is, if you're not heading forwards, you're actually going backwards. Staying the same isn't an option because if you're stood still, the world around you is still moving forwards. So you're actually going backwards. Think of it like when you're sat on a train that's stationary and then the train next to you starts moving forwards. You feel like your train is moving backwards. That is exactly what life is like. We need to visualize where we want to go and have some kind of direction for ourselves always. Of course, we wanna be open to unexpected opportunities and we might not end up on the same path that we originally planned for or we could change our mind and end up on a completely different path but ultimately we're still moving forward and that's the important thing so what habit do we need to achieve this I would say monthly reflections on our goals and our direction when you go back to your vision for your life regularly you can check in on what is moving forwards what needs a little push and what has changed course another habit for career in 2021 is to celebrate your achievements every week we are so hard harden ourselves when it comes to achievements. It's like we spend months working on a project, it happens, and then we just tick it off and move on to the next thing. Take some time each week to list down your wins, whether that is successfully presenting at work, or remembering to take your vitamins every day, or getting out of your comfort zone, or finally finishing that book. Whatever it is, it's a win, and we should be celebrating them regularly. And my third habit idea is to replace limiting beliefs with positive affirmations. You know I love a positive affirmation, I've mentioned it many times before, but they are just so important so I think it's really important to talk about them here as well. Limiting beliefs are what hold incredible people back from doing incredible things. They have the knowledge, they have the charisma, but they don't believe in themselves enough to put themselves out there and make it happen. We all have limiting beliefs of some kind and sometimes, in fact usually, they were triggered by an event that made us feel that way and then we in turn analyzed it and applied it to every similar event in our lives forevermore. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can break through our limiting beliefs and condition ourselves to have faith in our ability. I have some super cringe affirmations on my phone lock screen to remind myself that I am totally capable and worthy of achieving my dreams. This helps me work through my limiting beliefs as a big limiting belief that I've held for years is that all of my successes were always down to luck, but my failures were personal. I never gave myself credit for any job that I got, any good grade that I got, any Anything I succeeded at. I just put it down to good questions, right place, right time, luck of the draw, never my ability. But then, of course, on the other side, I took failures so personally. It was such an unhealthy belief to hold about myself. So now I remind myself daily, nope, I am capable. I do deserve success. It's not always luck. Sometimes, I'm just awesome. Do some exercises to discover any limiting beliefs that you may hold about yourself and then tailor positive affirmations accordingly that you can pull out anytime you feel yourself falling back into old bad habits. I have two videos that may help you with this. Firstly is turning negative self-talk into positive affirmations and the second one is how to process failure and criticism. I will link them both up here and down in the description box down below if you want to check those out. Our next category is spirituality, and spirituality looks different for everyone. The definition has morphed so much that you can pretty much define it however you want now. For me, I consider spirituality to be my connection to myself, to nature, and to purpose. The big questions. So the habits that I've created under this category revolve around listening to my intuition or gut instinct. 
connecting with my body and breath being present and spending time in our natural world. So firstly, we wanna build a meditation habit. I know, duh, right? Meditation has been an almost daily habit for about six months now for me, and it truly has changed my life. I will cover its impact on my life further in a future video, but practicing mindfulness and meditation has helped me take control of my anxiety like nothing else. It took me so, so, so long to create this habit. I mean, mindfulness became mainstream years ago now, and I've dabbled in it more times than I can count since then, but it never stuck until about six months ago, and now I can't even fall asleep if I don't spend 10 minutes being still before bed. If you wanna start creating a meditation habit, I highly recommend that you start with an app. I use Calm, but there's Headspace, Smiling Mind, and there's also tons of other ones as well. And then you wanna dedicate a time of day and a location to your habit. So you could do the end of your bed, you could do the corner of your room, you could do it straight after brushing your teeth or right before bed, whatever it looks like for you. But that way your brain associates that place and that time with that habit. So it's far easier to stick to. Secondly, tune out of your phone and into your intuition. The connection between our minds and our intuition has become so weak. We frazzle ourselves with the radio waves from our TV, phone, laptop, that we can no longer hear our gut instinct saying no. I mean, don't get me wrong, I use all these things. But what I started to try to make a habit out of is before doing something automatic, like saying yes to something or reaching for the gin bottle or flicking on Netflix, I stop, take a breath, and feel into what my body is saying rather than my mind. This goes for good things too. Maybe we say no to that walk because we've got work to do, but our gut is saying, you need some fresh air, go outside. But we've just gotten so used to ignoring it. Sometimes we're not necessarily losing out by not listening to our intuition, but instead it's that we've got a lot to gain from tuning into it. Make a habit out of checking in with your gut instinct before you make a decision. Leading on from this, getting outside more is a fantastic habit to start in 2021 for health, wealth and happiness. We are so blessed to live in such a beautiful natural world and we should be spending far more time in nature than we do. I should be spending far more time in nature than I do. I really miss living up in Sheffield where I could walk through parks and greenery on my way to work and uni and my nightly treks back from the gym were so therapeutic for me. But now that I don't live in the city anymore, I find it really hard to motivate myself to just walk around the block. So I started scheduling in a one hour walk every Thursday morning. That's my personal goal. It's not much. And maybe you're super lucky and you walk through a park to work every day. I don't know, but it's better than nothing for me. And if you also struggle to motivate yourself to get outside, I recommend you do that as well. Money is a tough one right now because I feel like half of us have saved a ton of money from not going out, moving back home, not having any event to buy an outfit for, but the other half of us have suffered from job losses or have been spending more just for something to do or for that instant gratification. No matter which one you are, these three habits are relevant for pretty much everyone. So the first one is to work on your money mindset. Instead of telling you too much about this one, I'm gonna point you in the right direction because one of my 2021 goals is to develop a healthier relationship with money. So I'm gonna link a few resources in the description box down below. But what I will say is that when we think of money as lacking or scarce, it's often harder to attract it and it feels more daunting. But when we think of money as abundant and flowing, it appears easier and feels more natural to attract. Even if we're talking about the same quantity of money, the mindset that we have around it changes how we feel about it. Secondly, spend mindfully. You'd be surprised how long you can survive without something when you don't let yourself buy it immediately. Instead of replenishing your favorite shampoo when you run out, how about using up those half empty bottles that are sat in the back of your cupboard? It's not like anyone really cares what you look like right now anyway. The same goes for skincare, makeup, etc. Make a habit out of using up older products before you repurchase your favorite or try out a new brand. Once upon a time, you were so excited to try that new product before the next best thing took its place. Give it another chance. If you need a little reward for doing this, then tell yourself that once you've used up all of the products, you can treat yourself to a brand new skincare or hair routine. You'll still be saving money by not wasting those old products. And the third one would be to delay your purchases. This kind of goes along the same lines, but the idea is to train yourself out of instant gratification and make sure that when you buy something, it's actually because it's going to improve
improve your life. So what I like to do is whenever I see something that I think I would like, or I have an idea for a purchase that I think will improve my life, I write it down in the notes on my phone. Then when I get paid or at the end of each month, I go back over that list and I see if I still really truly want those things. The things I do, I buy, and the things I don't, I remove or I leave them for the next month. This is such a good way to stop impulse purchases because you still write it down so you'll remember it for the future, but you give yourself a window to decide if you really truly need it. In order to live our best lives, we want to be lifelong learners. Learning shouldn't stop when we leave school. There are so many things out there to learn about and you never know what might light you up. Creating a habit around learning will absolutely bring you health, wealth, and happiness in 2021. So the first one is my personal habit that I'm implementing at the moment for 2021 is to read a book every single month. And I actually break it up even further into reading 20 pages per day. I do this to make sure that I don't excuse myself by saying that I don't have enough time to read. Everyone has enough time for 20 pages. You can do it whilst your pasta's cooking. A little tip is to move the Kindle app if you use Kindle to the bottom bar of your phone, or at least put it on the first screen so that you don't have to swipe to find the app. Or if you're a physical book person, just stick it somewhere that you cannot miss it. Secondly, add a journal prompt to ask yourself what new thing have you learned every single day? This one's pretty simple. You just wanna make sure you're learning one thing every day. And if you haven't learned something, Google it. The third one, ah, oh, my favorite kind of habit. And this one, if you're on this channel, you know that you just have to start doing this. And that is to start learning about yourself. Do some inner work, start weekly reflections, ask yourself a question every day, go to therapy, spend time alone, discover your values, uncover your vision, brain dump your feelings every time you feel angry or upset or over the moon. There are so many ways that you can start getting to know yourself better and any of these habits are a fantastic place to start. The last one is my personal favorite though. Brain dumping is awesome. Honestly, the notes on my phone are just full of random musings, but it is so powerful to uncover why you feel certain emotions and how you truly feel about the things going on in your life. You will learn so much by learning about yourself. The final category for health, wealth, and happiness habits for 2021 and beyond is fun. To have happiness in 2021, we should probably be incorporating some fun into our lives. Sometimes it's just so easy to get caught up in the big picture plans and goals that we forget to make every day of our lives enjoyable. We don't wanna just survive, we wanna thrive. And to do this, we need to be having a little fun. Firstly, and I've mentioned this one before in the three habits to start before 2021 video, but obviously we are in 2021 now. So if you haven't already started that habit, now is the time. And that is to seek joy every day. I know what you're thinking. I don't have time for joy. I'm too stressed, too in demand, too busy. However, if we're not seeking joy every day, we're always gonna be stressed. And if you're in demand from kids or bosses or whoever, you're not gonna be able to help them to the best of your ability if you don't help yourself first. So if you'd prefer to look at it this way, then help them by helping yourself seek joy. And if you think you're too busy, lady, you're watching this video right now. So you have time to make yourself a hot chocolate, spend 10 minutes smelling the daisies, do a Sudoku. I'm not suggesting you have a massage every single day of your life. I'm suggesting you make yourself a little joy list and you pick one thing every day to do so that every day of your life contains happiness. Secondly, make one fun plan every month preferably with friends, or if you're someone who is constantly surrounded by people, I can't relate, but maybe you should make it a solo plan. Either way, try planning a beach trip, a hike, a movie night, a coffee trip, a spa day, once a month, so that you're making time for fun and you always have something exciting up your sleeve. Usually the excitement or suspense for a fun day is more rewarding than the day itself. So whilst we wanna live in the present, it doesn't hurt to have something to look forward to. Our third habit for fun and also our final habit for this video today, which was a little long, so I apologize for that, but hopefully you found it valuable and I've saved the best to last anyway, so well done for making it this far. But the third habit is to practice gratitude. Now you might be thinking, how is gratitude related to fun? Well, the thing is that fun is a mindset in itself. 
And when we practice gratitude, we are more likely to notice and appreciate the laughs and the happy moments in our life that would otherwise be forgotten. You can either write out your gratitudes or you can think about them in the shower or over breakfast, but you probably wanna do this every single day. Really reflect and focus on those things that you're grateful for. Three is a good number to aim for. Remember, if you're trying to implement new healthy habits into your life, these don't happen overnight. It takes at least six weeks for a habit to start to become automatic. So feel free to use a habit tracker in the meantime to encourage you to keep up the good work. And whilst there are 21 habits on this list, I do not recommend that you start all 21 at once. Pick a maximum of three habits that appeal to you most and give it a few months of really working on these habits before you revisit this list and try to implement some more. In the last four months, I've picked up four habits and that's with consistent work. If you have made it this far, you are incredible. This video was excessively long. Obviously, I just have so much to say about habits. So I appreciate you so, so, so much. And I hope this video has given you a ton of inspiration to start living your best life in 2021. Don't forget to give it a like and hit subscribe below if you're not already. Wishing you all the health, wealth, and happiness in 2021 and beyond. And I'll see you next week or over on my Instagram at the.lovinglifestyle. Uh, I've split the- I've split- mm, I've split the cat- No! From- uh, However there's some- uh, However there's some- uh, mm, 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 mm.